Now there's some standard results which you can use while solving questions. And the first result is, we know that mod x is not differentiable at x equal to zero. In the same way, mod of x minus a, it is not differentiable at x equal to a. But if we have a function which is x minus a to the power n mod of x minus a, then this function fx, it will be differentiable at x equal to a if n is greater than or equal to 1 and it is not differentiable at x equal to a if n is less than 1. In the same way, we can write this function fx as either x to the power n sine 1 by x or x to the power n cos 1 by x when x is unequal to 0 and 0 at x equal to 0. Now this function fx also it is differentiable at x equal to a if n is greater than 1 and it is not differentiable at x equal to a if n is less than or equal to 1. Now this function if n is greater than or equal to 1 it is differentiable at x equal to a and basically it is differentiable for x belongs to r and here also this function will be differentiable for x belongs to r. This third point is if fx is x minus a into gx and this function gx it is continuous at x equal to a then this function fx will be continuous at x equal to a and f dash a will be simply equal to ga. Another result is Suppose we have two functions fx and gx which are defined in the interval a to b such that fx is differentiable in this interval and gx is continuous in this interval a b and there is a point c in this interval a b such that f c is 0 then this product f x into g x it will be differentiable at x equal to c. Now if we take an example we have defined a function f x as x to the power 2 by 3 into sin x. Now if we look at this sin x we know that this y equals to sin x it is continuous and differentiable in x belongs to r whereas this function y equals x to the power 2 by 3 it is continuous in x belongs to r and if we find dy by dx it will be 2 by 3 x to the power minus 1 by 3 it is differentiable in x belongs to r minus 0 and we know that sin 0 is equal to 0. So basically this function sin x it is a differentiable function whose value is 0 at 0 and this x to the power 2 by 3 is a continuous function. So this product x to the power 2 by 3 into sin x will be differentiable at x equal to 0 and this fifth one it is actually the intermediate value property of derivatives the intermediate value property of derivatives and it says if we have a function fx which is differentiable in this closed interval a b then in this interval 
f dash x will take all the values between f dash a positive and f dash b negative. Now sixth result, it is also a theorem. It says if a function fx it is differentiable at x equal to a and if a is unequal to 0 then 1 upon fx is also differentiable at x equal to a. Now this basically is a corollary of fx upon gx differentiability result. And another one that we can use from here is if we have function fx and it is differentiable at x equal to a then f square x is also differentiable at x equal to a because it is a composition of x square and fx and this x square is differentiable in x belongs to r. So we can work out many more results using algebra of differentiability. Now seventh result is if we have a function fx which is continuous and 1 1 defined on an interval such that this fx is differentiable at x equal to a and f dash a is unequal to 0 then inverse of this function fx is differentiable at x equals f a and its derivative at x equal to f a will be simply 1 by f dash a. If we look at it intuitively, suppose we have a function f x which is differentiable at a and f dash a is unequal to 0 and g is inverse function of f then we can write g of fx as x and if we differentiate this we can write g dash fx into f dash x will be equal to 1 now if we replace x with a we can write g dash f a into f dash a as 1 or simply g dash f a it is equal to 1 upon f dash a that is derivative of its inverse function at f a will be equal to 1 upon f dash a provided f dash a is unequal to 0. And finally eighth we have Darbo's theorem d a r b o u x Darbo's theorem. Now this theorem says if we have a function f x which is differentiable in closed interval a b such that f dash a into f dash b it is less than 0 then there exists at least one point c in the open interval a b such that f dash c is 0 and one of the corollary of this theorem is if a function f x is differentiable in closed interval a b and f dash a is not equal to f dash b and k is a number lying between f dash a and f dash b then there exists 
at least one point C in the open interval AB such that F dash C it is equal to K, which again is your intermediate value property of derivatives. Now let us take up an example. Say for example, we are given that a function from 0 to 2 to R is a differentiable function such that F0 is 0, F1 is 2 and F2 is 1. We have to prove that there exists at least one C in the interval 0 to 2 such that F dash C is equal to minus 1 by 2. Now this what we will do is, since we are given that this function fx is differentiable in closed interval 0 to 2, we will apply Lagrange's mean value theorem for this function fx first in the interval 0 to 1. Now since this function is continuous and differentiable, then Lagrange's mean value theorem says there exists a point c1 in the interval 0 to 1 such that f dash c1 will be equal to f1 minus f0 upon 1 minus 0 and here the value of f1 is 2 so it will be this 2 minus 0 upon 1 minus 0 which is 2 and if we apply Lagrange's mean value theorem on this function in the interval 1 to 2 then there exists at least one c2 in the interval 1 to 2 such that f dash c2 will be equal to f2 minus f1 upon 2 minus 1 and here value of f2 it is 1 value of f1 is 2 and here it is 1 so this value is minus 1. So basically f dash c1 it is 2 and f dash c2 it is minus 1. Now this function fx it is a differentiable function. Now f dash c2 is minus 1 and f dash c1 is 2 and we know that minus 1 by 2 it lies in this interval between minus 1 and 2 then using this corollary we can say there exists at least one c in the interval c1 and c2 such that f dash c will be equal to minus 1 by 2 and this interval c1 c2 it's a subset of this interval 0 to 2 that means there exists at least one c in this interval where this derivative will be minus 1 by 2 and the ninth one is if we have a function fx which is differentiable at x equal to a then mod of fx will be differentiable at x equal to a if f a is unequal to 0. Now here the question is we are given this function f x which is 2 x into under root of x cube minus 1 plus 5 under root of x into under root of 1 minus x to the power 4 plus 7 x square into under root of x minus 1 plus 3x plus 2 and we need to find its continuity and differentiability at x equals 1. Now first we will find domain of this function. Now since we have square root this x cube minus 1 it should be greater than or equal to 0 that means x is greater than or equal to 1. Now for this we will get x is greater than or equal to 0. Now for 1 minus x to the power 4 it should be greater than or equal to 0 or x to the power 4 minus 1 should be less than or equal to 0. We will have minus 1 plus 1 and this is plus minus and plus. So we will get x should lie between minus 1 and plus 1. Here x is greater than or equal to 1. Now if we take intersection of all these intervals then this function is defined at only one point. So this function is defined only at x equals to 1 and the value of this function at 1 is now this is 0, this is 0, this is 0 
and 5. So basically this function it is defined only at this point 1 and at this point its value is 5. So it is an isolated point. Now at 1 there is no neighborhood neither on the left hand side nor on the right hand side. Now we have an isolated point and then literature says at this point the function will be continuous but not differentiable. So the function is continuous but not differentiable at x equals to 1 and that's your option A.